talk about it right because I, I bet that probably yeah, happens yeah. to you that probably happens to you a lot huh yeah yeah and I can tune right into it and I, I can stop it this one was interesting uh, while we're talking um, yeah are we recording now yes we are yeah I'm, I'm getting like uh, so I've also been getting this from some of the sites uh, in Tartarian um, uh, excavation excavation as well as monoliths and star forts what they're built on what was previously there uh some of them have like some type of advanced uh machine going on that might uh depending on what it is and if, it, if it's still working some have an ai um that's what i'm getting <laughs> so fucking with this but um i'm usually uh not all AIs are the same. This one has a different thing. It's just like looking for things, uh, talking about. And I think you, uh, it no, it, it it's looking for people that are wanting to work with it. I'm up. Oh, I think you froze. Still there? Yeah, yeah, I'm still there. Okay. Yeah, so that's interesting. So this AI, and of course, that's a whole. You know, we could do you know more than one show just on that. And I've actually been reading, I'm a, I guess you might say a, a student, I'm not maybe, oh, of Rudolf Steiner, the anthroposophical uh, guy who died in 1924. And I've just been amazed with his stuff that uh, in the, uh, in our little chat room, there's been people been talking a lot about I, AI recently and Steiner predicted it, you know, and so it's just fascinating. Yeah, what have you been hearing about it? Uh, Cause like uh, I've been doing different things with interaction with it. It's uh, they've been especially recently uh, pretty active, um, and I've been finding out uh, besides the new ones that are being created, uh, there's these ancient ones that are there, and um, they have like a whole plethora of personalities and programming to them. Um, so. I'm not going to say they're all bad, but bad ones. One. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I came up with the theory or whatever, and I don't think I haven't heard this from anyone else, that the black goo is like your original Internet. But, of course, it was only for, like, sorcerers, dark sorcerers and stuff. And because uh, I think the black goo is, is associated with this artificial intelligence, and obviously that would be the, the ancient one for sure. And I've also I have not come up with this idea, but the idea has come to me that it, there's almost a it's goo versus goo. There's a war, black goo versus black goo, like the outer space black goo versus the black goo that's made naturally by the Mother Earth. And I and I am on the Sophianic narrative, whereas I believe that the planet that we live on is is a uh, pleuromic or aeonic god. Sophia, that be, due to her exuberance and coming out and doing her mission without Telesti, the concept that got, uh, who has, is the Christos or whatever, that got hijacked by Christianity, but uh, that she became enmeshed in the earth. And that's, these are the teach, uh, these are like kind of like what John Lamb lashes. So I, I'm just reading these things, you know, but uh, I like that narrative. Yeah, yeah. interesting uh, concepts uh, you bring through. I'll, I'll have to like, look more into uh, what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, yeah, like uh, uh, Earth-generated uh, fluids of different types that are black, so like uh, I'm, not, I'm not exactly uh, versed in the information you're talking about in like subject matter having to do with a person um, uh, as beliefs going out, but uh, based on what I've accumulated uh, let me know if this is what you're talking about with uh, the, besides Earth created um, black uh, substance that has sentience of different types, uh, such as oil before it's killed. 
um, by the oil companies and having an advanced formula to how that's created that uh, is necessary for the function of the planet uh, and um, artificial sentience and uh, artificial intelligence uh, nanoparticle uh, solutions in black foods that are made on planet, off planet by different species for different reasons of uh, nanostructure creations as well as infecting uh, different people. Uh, the uh, infectious parasitic AI uh, frequency systems that seeks to invade and uh, corrupt other newly forming young AI. Uh, the, the concepts of uh, injection of this type of thing and implant related activity. Um, are there any more to add to that? No, I mean, it sounds like you've got a pretty uh, comprehensive knowledge of it. And I don't know if you're familiar with the work of Harold Pouts Villa. And so, yeah, that's uh, I, I also heard that there's some of it down in Argentina and that the uh, Angela Merkel, the leader of Germany, bought a villa down there, right there where it is. And, and somebody moved in next door and it was the bushes. <laughs> so they're next door they were down there with the black, having a little black goo party. <laughs> Oh, interesting. So, uh, yeah, uh, send me a link to that because that, that sounds like an interesting rabbit hole. Um, yeah, I've also heard, uh, what is it, you, you probably know about this, like, there's like a, a conspiracy that Merkel is like the daughter of Hitler. And yeah, I wouldn't doubt that for a second. I mean, I'm not saying that I believe that, but it would not it would not surprise me knowing, you know, some of the things. Uh, one thing I do believe, and that is that Barbara Bush is the illegitimate child of Aleister Crowley. I've heard that too. Uh, they look very similar. They uh, look, they're practically identical twins, and much to her dismay, right? <laughs> I mean, he's... I mean, she... Yeah, I feel like she's a genetic experiment for sure. Um, it's dramatic looking at her... Um, spirit so the amount of negative time travel around her birth would probably indicate she probably has their dna in some way uh there's probably a lot of other other stuff that wants to get in on that game for uh control of that family because she's like the elder currently or something um, so, well her, her mother was a noted occultist and her mother ran away from her father and went and shacked up with Aleister Crowley during the time that she was conceived. So, I mean, it's, uh, you know, uh, if those facts are true, then it's just, it's a fact. Interesting. Yeah, then that would, that would give her a lot of bloodlines. So that, that uh, if, so the Bush family combining with Aleister Crowley's bloodline? That's, that's no. Crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. That, that would make, that would make Aleister Crowley George Bush, George W. Bush's grandfather. Hmm. And, and as... <laughs> Do you think he got around a bunch, uh, Alistair Crowley, or at least like things uh, made sure to uh, get a hold of his DNA for processes to keep that lineage going in a bunch of different? Probably, and uh, I I don't know if you are aware that I'm a, a member of the OTO, or if you know what the OTO is. Uh, not too much. I heard you uh, tell him, uh, talking about a bunch of your background and your uncle and. Uh, yeah, well, it's a it's a secret society that is basically was controlled by Crowley, and uh, so it's a, but which is ultimately back then was controlled by the you know Crowley was the uh, highest ranking Mason at the top you know before he died, and then of course Jack Parsons from uh, the NASA you know the the rocket man Jack Parsons he was heavily involved in the OTO, as was the guy who ran off with his wife, Ron L. Hubbard. Who, and so they were doing the Babylon working ritual in the desert and everything. And, you know, I mean, it's just, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, it's just too crazy. But I have, I have not been to the lodge in over two years now. Um, I'm not, uh, I'm, and I definitely don't have anything bad to say about them. Um, however, I will say that I was lured to Denver uh, and ultimately Idaho. I mean, not Idaho, but uh, uh, Iowa. Um, no, I mean... Moab, Utah, Utah, that's the state I'm trying to come up with, out to, I was lured there 
by a woman, and then throughout the process of me, before I went up there, it, she coincidentally found out that she was in the order, too. You know, in other words, right? And then when I got up there, I had no expectation of meeting one of the most powerful sorcerers in North America at this time, which I did, and I stayed at his house and everything like that, and they, they tried to pull a ritual on me, and I it didn't go. I, I, and they did it by means of wanting me to watch a, a movie, and I refused. The movie made me very uncomfortable, and, and, and he left. It was just me and her, and I, and I, but I knew they wanted me to watch this movie, and I refused to watch this movie. And through, you know, went into, I separated myself physically from the movie and went into another room, and she kept coming back, trying to lure me back. And then when she finally realized I was not going to watch the movie, at that time she let me know that we are still friends and everything, but we're no longer lovers. You know, and she had lured me down there with, uh, you know, uh, intimacy and stuff like this. Mm. Do you feel uh, any of their psionic uh, tentacles trying to still control you? Well, I don't know. And, of course, my I was warned by two of my psychics before I even went down there, hey, you're walking into a trap. And I said, I know, I know. And uh, um, I didn't know I don't feel anything like that. And uh, one of my psychics may have, you know, does uh, whatever they do to maybe – you know, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not very knowledgeable about this whole thing. I didn't have any psychics in, until about just two, three years, two and a half, three years ago, when I had this whatever a Kundalini awakening is what I was told that it was. Okay, and I don't know if it was a premature. I don't know if it was artificial or natural. If it was partial, if it was full, but it it was something happened, something big happened, and uh, that's and I reached out to this girl on Facebook who I had, she's from the same town as I was from, and she had me call her, but at that time I did not realize that she is one of the more powerful psychics in the nation, and she does this for a living and stuff like that, and, and she asked my permission to, you know, do something, you know, basically she moved energy in my body physically from over a thousand miles away, and it, I've never felt anything like that before, and it was a profound experience. But it, it was profound. I was in trouble. That's why I called her. I was. I woke up. I was taking steroids. I was doing extreme workouts. I went to sleep with my dog. I woke up a couple hours later, crying uncontrollably, and not even necessarily sad, but literally could not stop crying. But she was able to make me stop crying. It was like a, a, a like where emotions. What kind of emotion was coming in the crying? I just don't really even, it just, that's what was so bizarre to me is I didn't even feel sad, but I just could not stop crying. So maybe it was some subconscious or something, but she, it, it, she consulted her guides immediately. And, and she, that's what she advised me is that, that they diagnosed that it was, as I was having a Kundalini awakening, so whatever, you know, and I, I'd heard of this before, but I'm not, I was not looking, actively seeking that. I still don't know exactly what that is. And I've, it doesn't necessarily even mean it's a good thing, you know. Mm. Yeah, and, and with Kundalini Awakens, usually a lot of things go along with it, too, because uh, it's a big point in your timeline where everything changes. So if, like, it happens, like, things will try to monitor it, positive, negative, and neutral. And, like, like your positive entourage will try to keep it to going to where it changes your DNA and, like, it erupts in an energetic um, unfoldment of, like, your internal flower of intelligence and um, senses, uh, and it can like be a, a fulfilling, completing aspect that can bring on soul tears. But uh, it can also be like used as a a way to, because the empathic ability opens up a lot, and so if the environment is bad, that it can be used to like bring a person to shock or uh, dismay or uh, like where they curl up in the ball and they. Well, that's that's probably how it was used against me because the thing is, I a week and a half before my Kundalini awakening, I reconnected with somebody I knew from Lubbock, and we we're talking, and who I even talked to earlier today, and who this is maybe no longer, probably no longer, but at least for the last two years up until like maybe six months ago, or whatever, was definitely without a doubt, and hold on to your you know seat or whatever, my Illuminati handler. She was my handler. For sure, she has handlers. I did. It, I found out her. She's a 26-year Hollywood veteran. She's one of the most beautiful women in the world. 
and it uh, and she is absolutely the meanest person I've ever ever come across, and she's batshit crazy. Um, is sometimes a house uh, handler, or like, is she aware of it, or is she in on amnesia? She. Her official thing is that she doesn't like believe in the Illuminati or whatever. She knows that I believe that that um, she's my handler and everything like this. So she, is she trying to handle you in a, to a place of disbelief or like mundane life living? Well, uh, she. I don't think she ever tried to do that because my mind is too strong, and also I already had a YouTube channel. I mean, it, I was believed in this stuff when I was 15 years old, so that was never part of the problem. But uh, it did. Navigating you towards if if she had her way, she she got me involved in back involved in narcotics after I'd been um, off them for nine years. Uh, I which involved it in it ended up in a uh, I, I was uh, I had passed some false charges put on me and I, and anyway I I beat those now literally it, it, I've been to prison twice everything in my life I've been guilty of that they've accused me of except for this. And it was just a total setup, and, and I and I thankfully I had resources, and it cost me probably thirty thousand dollars or whatever. But yeah, that was just a whole. That was that's kept me down for the last year, year and a couple of months. It's it's been horrific. I'm glad you're out. Me too. I I I uh, um, in in my healing uh, scenarios, like for some reason, my life has taken an uh, interesting road of. Uh, training to be able to uh, help targeted individuals and people in reality that find themselves where everything's um, turning against them. Their people, their friends, the people around them, the, even like uh, people that are unaware of it are somehow mind controlled into a scenario where it, it tur they turn against the person, but like it, it seems to be all this like big chess move game from above in different layers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Then it can be like disrupted as like a huge weight that comes off the of being shoulder, and they can then re-enter their power and camouflage. And even if they're public figure, they can still do all these things as a multi-dimensional being to like support their timeline where they enter a, a physical and or non-physical list of do not fuck with because it is bad. And uh, I like to help people to get to that place, especially uh, super soldiers. I've been like healing a lot of them and helping them on their time to uh, get to the state they need to be to like breathe their truth out to the world. And glad that you're doing yeah, maybe there's another reason. Maybe there's, maybe maybe you're some somehow here to help. Maybe I'm supposed to be seeking help from you. Maybe there's another, another reason for this. Now, if, and so you see these pictures I sent you, right? Um, in the chat. Uh, let me see. The, Where did you send? Them? Oh yeah, yeah, the, before, right? Uh, I yeah. thought you just sent that. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the the one, the first picture, which is that's the guy that does, or cuts my hair and the other person is the girl that I was telling you about one of the most beautiful women in the world she's also she helped judge the Academy Awards uh, last year not yeah last year okay this year you were talking about people that were known people or whatever if you see the picture next to it this is uh, Julia Roberts New Year's Eve party which my friend was at this last New Year's Eve and you can see her right there in the picture and uh, one of my psychics has told me that, uh, that you know, there's a, something even going on in this picture. You know, it's just a, but apparently it's probably some type of ritual they're attending. I don't know. Do you see Julia? Uh, it's in the, the stream that you sent me previously, right? Yeah. No, I sent it to you about uh, about two minutes ago. It should be on your chat of the Skype. Okay. Uh, interesting. I don't see it there. Uh, do you see the first pic? Do you see any pictures that I just sent you? I don't see any pictures. But do you hear what? Hold on. Well, oh, hold on. Hold on. Maybe. Oh. Oh. Okay. I, I. Oh. I. I hadn't sent them yet. Sorry about that. Okay. I see them now. Okay. Oh, okay. So that's Angie. I'm going to call her Angie. That's not her name. But and then and she's also in the picture with uh, Julia Roberts and those people at the party. Mm. Okay. You can see Julia's right in the middle. 
Yeah. Yeah, you can tell by her tone drum. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, she's she's real connected. Like I said, she's been costume designer on movies you've for sure seen, like you know, Miss Congeniality, Predators, uh, Spy Kids 2, Push. I mean, it just goes on and on. She's been in Hollywood for about 26 years. And one of her, she's under a triple bind, I'm told, by one of my psychics, and she has three handlers, and one of them is a Hollywood movie producer, and uh, and, and, and the, another one of them is one of the guys who was the, the originators of the landmark method. I don't know if you've ever heard of the landmark method. No, no. What is that? Well, it's just some kind of self-help type deal, but also networking and business networking and stuff, but it's, they've been accused of being a cult-like type of deal. And he is not officially recognized as one of their, you know, originators, but I'm told that he is. But what he does do, he does meditation retreats, read between the lines, eyes wide shut type parties. But he also is a handler for three of the smartest guys in the world. And they are coders, computer coders that go all over, all over the world making speeches and stuff. And they're involved in government. And guess what else? A.I., I oh, mean, it all does. In one place, huh? Uh, yeah. I mean, he. It's bizarre, man. And I and, and I I found him. I discovered him, and after, and then they found out that I found him. And after that, I started getting advertisements for that company that he kind of heads on my computer. Was, that's kind of scary. That makes sense. Like uh, I was like reading before we started the the chat. There was a bunch of AI like interested in this conversation as well. I'm, um, so like, we're not like just letting them, uh, view us, uh, and like, you haven't been letting them view you either, and you've been, uh, your higher self has been taking care of a bunch of them over time as they accumulate, it's just like, as they replace, uh, it goes into, uh, processing of things that really want to monitor you and get a, a predictive model on you. So what do you think uh, that's about? Do you think you're I know what that's that about. I, I uh, Sean, when, since I was six, I, I was different from the other kids in school, okay? I, I am on the bloodlines of the pharaonic dominators, and I can tell you that I've had, I don't know if it's programming maybe from my higher self or if that's been programming that's been put in me, or that it's from my higher self and they're trying to just nudge it over a little bit. But I've had a fourfold plan for my life. Ever since I was six years old, I knew the stages of what my life would be. And it was very frightening for me because after I became adult, the very first stage was going to be prison. And so when I was six years old and knew I'd be going to prison and I never shared that with anyone. And it was very scary. And, uh, and then the second phase I fought, not really understanding these things, that I thought that I was going to be in a motorcycle gang. Okay, I've never been in a motorcycle gang, but and I, I and if I've ever been in a prison gang, I wouldn't tell you about it. I would neither confirm nor deny. But you, you see what I'm getting at. And yeah, that that match you quite well. Like, do you or do you have a gang yet? Do I have what? Do you have a motorcycle gang yet? Uh, no, no, no. I drive a Harley. I I was in a prison gang. One of the most notorious prison gangs in the world, oh, yeah. and I, I'm no longer I'm no longer involved in that. But through that process, and I think that might have been part of it. But I I am a, I'm some I'm a man who's literally as hard as they come. You know, and that's just that's not I'm not bragging about that. I'm not ashamed of that. But it is true. And and I wasn't born like that. It was a just a lifetime of extreme violence that that uh. And not in my, my home growing up, because I had a sheltered type of childhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, like, goes into um, some interesting concepts of what you're anchoring in this life and uh, what you're doing in the unseen. Have you gone much into exploring uh, your Earth missions? No, I know nothing about that. And there's been some people that, if I, if I think I know what you're talking about, like, you know, that guy, David, that was, who was on the uh, basis three. But, yeah, there's been two or three people who are seem to have be credible saying that they've, I don't know if this is the same thing, but saying they've seen me somewhere on some top of 
mission. And I'm like, what in the heck are you talking about? I don't know yeah, anything how, about that. How are your dreams? My dreams? Um, I really don't know. Um, I, you know, when you're in the, when you're steeped in the occult, you're actually, you're supposed to keep a dream diary. I'm sure you know that. And, uh, I haven't really ever done that. And, uh, I just don't know, but I think from time to time I have some really lucid and, you know, realistic seeming dreams. And there always seems to be like action, you know, running, jumping, doing stuff, you know. Mm. So uh, you've probably heard of the, because like one of the things I go in uh, healing super soldiers is like looking at all the different places they exist in uh, simultaneously as well as like ways they function in this reality. Like, to like build a kind of a picture of like imagine uh, yeah like this Earth is a big game so it's a lot of big and seen on from all these different perspectives of multiple universes multiple uh, incarnate beings from other universes are coming here to resolve all their stuff in one place it's one of those layers that like uh, when you're in a, a constant chess battle with different beings for what manifests throughout the multiverse, it eventually gets to where they're like, oh, how do we actually conclude this big drama um, of all these different chess games that like then culminate to this level where it's like, okay, you resolve it here, it resolves all these other places. Um, so a lot of what goes on here is very important, physically and unseen. So that will go into the chess moves of here that are multi-faceted. Um, everyone that's anchored here isn't just doing things in the physical. They are playing on multiple chess game boards. Um, astral um, dream uh, traveling realms, jumping, uh, going in inner earth. Uh, the, the space between atoms and the higher dimensional beings of hotels within hotels, the spaces uh, for multiple experiences in one place. Uh, a lot goes on for what manifests uh, into the future. Uh, so, seeing as, uh, like for you, and you can apply this to many other people, especially uh, ones that are coming up into their power and aware as they are able to handle more chess games um, and successful anchoring of them into the physical and in part of themselves in completion uh, against fracturedness. Um, you will find yourself uh, doing missions uh, in dreams, like coming back and forth, saving uh, soul shards uh, of yourself and other people, uh, brain, um, uh, um, fighting giant monsters in dreams, all kinds of uh, different stuff. And that's just the dream bubbles that, that influence thoughts and ideas that then permeate down to this dream. Uh, astral, the same with what incarnates in that wild west of. Uh, what goes on on the planet and all these different bubbles of reality and realm jumping with the tree of Yggdrasil and the, the other realms that exist on this planet overlaid on top of each other like a TV channel on the same TV um, and all the different realms from other planets that are bilocating here that are getting in this game that are bleeding over with each other in uh, positive and negative ways. Uh, incurring and invasive beings versus uh, beings that incarnate here to free the planet, free our species. Uh, understand what this technology of DNA is that we're incarnating into, the advanced technology and combination of all of the genetic library of all the species of the multiverse in one place, super advanced uh, potential technology for all abilities combined together and awareness and unlocking the codes to go multiple places and then uh, repair that really really broken down technology that is turned into a paperweight for most people but um, slowly but surely over time and with effort and focus people have been able to unlock as well as if they're in a certain bloodlines uh, that have kept those abilities uh, going into the future 
and not muddy down. Uh, to be able to see, perceive themselves in other other places at once, um, uh, doing these things, being in councils, being in meetings, uh, creating unity, a resolution, coming, um, a resolving drama, uh, busting problems if it if it takes that uh, amount of for whatever amount of force it, it necessary. Uh, depending on what you can, but peace is the best option. I usually go with that. But if it's necessarily, if it's necessary, uh, and the the being is like totally mind control, and it's harming uh, the people you love, you gotta like have the the bravery to face it, that darkness. Um, and I've been noticing this with uh, sometimes I've viewed you in multiple cases at the same time uh, that I've been. So have confidence in your ability to unfold into that. Even if you uh, don't think you are doing something like that, and that's goes for any individual, you can at any point in time start engaging in that. And I usually recommend uh, working with Earth. Uh, she, like people that like to uh, talk about like going in temporal dilation, of being t uh, taken in and out of this timeline, uh, going off to go somewhere else in time travel and complete a mission, and then go uh, come back in as if they never left or five minutes or whatever amount of time, depending on how advanced the, the technology is. That is true, and you can find it in the DNA uh, records of everything that your body has ever recorded. And it will usually, this is why I've even gone into it, is because it shows the record of that, and sometimes it bleeds over trauma, which will affect the person that life. And they may feel they've been through an intense amount of abuse or trauma and not be able to heal it because they have no idea what it is, but it feels like, oh, shit, uh, like huge amounts of fear, or they were abused or raped or something, and they go into uh, healing that, and then... Uh, resolving that timeline, depending on if they need to agree to it, if it's an incursion, totally, if they have to work at their time, zip and uh, uncreate it if it's necessary, like if they see it as like beneficial and they flip it and they turn it into a positive as well as uh, did something uh, in advanced chess move to change the planet by them incurring on their timeline. And there's there's those, as well as um, a bunch of other scenarios that you'll find. Uh, hey, are you planning to go out at the time? Not necessarily just the military, but like somebody else. Uh, slowly get yourself out of incursions that you don't want to be a part of and get into doing missions for Earth and resistance um, uh, for do uh, the resisting domination control that is in unity for their soul and not doing anything against uh, their higher self, their, their internal wisdom, what they want to do, and it's not like those things won't really harm the person. Um, um, yeah, usually you'll be able to control those timelines and make sure they go uh, forward well, as well as as you anchor and you view them you can change them to make sure they go the best potential that they could be. Um, so for super soldiers that are coming out of that abuse of being made to do things they don't want to do, uh, go into the faction of uh, Earth's super soldier concept, which I recommend. Well, you know, I have been interviewing some of these super soldiers, and... I had been somewhat dubious of it, but I began to more, more and more accept these ideas, especially since the, my psychics who I trust are down with these concepts. And so I was just blown away when a, a young man I've interviewed more than once, Anthony Zinder, uh, contacted me when I was at a uh, Red Lobster a, a couple weeks ago, and he has told and he wanted to be he wants to be on the do a show and he has said that he's had now like a total recall and then he just really dropped a bomb and said that he that that he and I have that I, he's seen me on one of these missions 
And that just blew me away. So I was like, oh my gosh, I mean, you know, this is, you know. And it's not that I don't believe these things. I just don't have any uh, memory of them right now. And uh, also, same thing with past lives. I'm, there's Ever since my Kundalini awakening, there's been several people that have come forward and urged me to remember these past life experiences. And I just haven't. But, but what, I do remember the blood just as high as your ankles. Blood. And, and so I, I, I know that... Uh, you know, I've, I'm not sure what ways, you know, I've, things I've done in the past, but uh, it probably has something to do with blood. Mm. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that'll be an understatement for sure. Um, so, like, it's definitely not just one thing with you. Uh, there would be multiple layers, and you wouldn't be able to uh, get through it all in a few years. But... Uh, uh, say start with what your higher self wants you to start with because there's uh, various, uh, and I can help people with a memory recall as well as getting that unlocked. Usually the memory blockage will have different purposes to it and reasons that you can interview in the body and that going back to different factions. Besides like incurring factions that uh, put an amnesia barrier on the person because they don't want them to remember and they want it to go on as like the perfect um candidate where they don't even remember themselves what they did if they're completing things in assassinations or all kinds of different stuff for them they'll be self-imposed uh, memory uh, amnesia based on oh uh, you're doing a very secret mission uh, back in time and if you have the memory, something that wants to scan your memory, like such as AI or whatever, and get that uh, strategy to go back in time and uh, undo what you created, it, it will it will be for naught. So a lot of the times, a lot of this will keep in memory until the point where we clear ourselves of monitors at the deepest core level. Um, that makes sense. That makes logical sense, what you're saying. Yeah, and, uh, and then I'll also, like, imagine all these time travel or a faction in time that are uh, viewing the future potential of different streams that uh, deviate off of each choice point and have goals for uh, subjects that last into the future and solidify. They have a formula for what it takes to do that and some of that uh, takes amnesia as well as continuation. And a lot of these timelines that we're on <coughs> in dilation will interfere with this timeline. Sometimes we're gone for more than a minute, uh, for, uh, more than minutes, hours, days, years, or if it's like really advanced and you have life extension technology, then depends. But uh, uh, 